he's very nice, you know, and uh, he may not look like he's nice. He looks kind of like, he looks like an asshole, <laughs> but he's a very nice person. And I literally said, I'm a little bored at one point. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. I think this segues perfectly into something you mentioned just now. You said at one point I only dated or I said I didn't date black men. I was waiting on that. Um, walk me through how you got there, why you got there, and um, where you are now. Okay. Um, growing up, I had a lot of white friends. So I was more into their culture, of course. You know, of course I knew the black culture. I have black family, you know, so, um, and we're really country black family. <laughs> like eat raccoons, squirrels, you know, make moonshines and oh, stuff damn. like that. Yeah. Um, I have not eaten raccoons, but my granddad likes to eat raccoons. So I'm like, have that. Um, but um, my friends who were white and I was very influenced by, they talked about marriage a lot. You know, I talked about, oh, what am I going to do when I get married and have kids? And this is what I want, the kind of guy I want, kind of lifestyle. And I thought that was what I wanted exactly because it seemed um, it was different from what I from what I had. You know, single mom with um, my mom being a single mom of three and I'm the only female, had no dad in my life. And most of my friends had a dad. I wanted my dad in my life. So I was like, if I have kids, I want my kids to have their dad in their lives. And most of the black families I knew didn't. So this is one of the reasons why I was so attracted to white guys. Then growing up and, you know, getting out of where I was before and coming into um, having more friends that are of diverse cultures, realizing that a lot of them are around their children or wanted to be if they were going to have kids. And now I'm open to dating basically any race because it's based off of who you are as a person. What do you, you know, see yourself, like, who do you see yourself being when you get older? Um, you know, that kind of dynamic instead of me having that very, like, one track mind on black men don't stay with their families and white men do, you know? Now I don't believe that at all. I have so many black guy friends who are all into their their kids and whether they're with the, you know, the baby mom or not, they're right there with their kids and they love their children. And I am, I it literally like warms my heart to see that because I didn't have that and I wanted it. And, um, I remember to this day when I was six years old, I used, I used to write all the time and I wrote a letter to my dad and I was crying my eyeballs out because I kept asking, why don't you want me? I didn't know. He didn't know who I was. <laughs> I had no idea. I knew his name, but my mom at the time didn't tell me because I was six, you know? So I just thought he just didn't want me. And that created like an abandonment thing in me, you know? Um, I'm over that now. <laughs> um, he and I actually, to, right, right now, we're really good. Uh, we're, I call him friend, basically, because he came in my life later on, you know? But I love my dad and I still need him at times. And he was just talking to me yesterday, telling me to go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but, um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's literally, I think a lot of times based off of your parents, who you decide you want to end up with in the future. So it's what you're used to, or you want something different. And I, I really appreciate that story because very often when we hear about women say, um, I'm going to go to a white guy. He treats me better. It's not as deep as that. It's, right. it's more so uh, I was dating black thugs and then I found myself a white nerd that is a nice guy to me. Right. And then my pushback is always that why couldn't a black nerd be a good man to you? Because we don't incentivize that behavior in our community. But in your, in your situation, this started from young. This started from white men represented this, black right. men represented that. 
How do you feel like this common thread of fathers not being in the home, whether because they left voluntarily, whether they didn't know, whether um, mass incarceration, whatever the case may be, um, what part do you think Black women are playing in this? Because there's there's a there's this common thing out now where like women are saying, you know, I'm gonna have a kid without a man. Like I'm gonna go to the sperm bank and like this idea that men are not necessary at all. So like right. what part do you feel like women, a black women are playing in this dysfunction? Okay, so I've actually said, I'm gonna have a kid on my own, okay? <laughs> my reason though is because I'm not ratchet and it's really hard for me to actually get a man who actually wants to stay and actually be with me. That's my reason. Oh, we're going to get into it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I already know. I already Go know. Ahead. Um, so I've seen and experienced some women actually want to use their kid as leverage over the man a lot of the time. So they will actually say, sorry, women. <laughs> um, I guess I'm not biased towards anything. Hey, so, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um they, if they're like, okay, so he doesn't want to be with me, he can't see his kid. Who does that? The kid is totally different from you. Why are you suffering, making this kid suffer because you can't be with that guy anymore? It, you're really like fucking up the kid's emotional state and it's not fun and it's not fair to them. If the dad wants to be in the kid's life, let it, <laughs> like, let it happen. Unless he's, you know, like, shooting people and all this kind of stuff like that. And you have some kind of fear over your kid's livelihood and stability. I understand that. But if he is a good person and a good dad, let him be around. And I think that is one of the biggest things that happens in a lot of women. They get so butthurt about the fact that he did this, he did that to me. And then they use that kid as, no, you can't see your child. Let's talk about you. You said, you said, um, I, I'll, did, did you say sperm bank or did you say, I'll just go ahead and have a kid with somebody? A sperm and, bank. Okay. So, <laughs> so talk, I, I don't want to like prematurely, yeah. <laughs> pun intended, no pun intended. I don't want to prematurely like, um, you know, assess what you're saying. So explain to me why you think it's a good idea. I've had... <laughs> I've had some experiences with guys that, um, you know, lead up to not necessarily being long term. Right. Um, I really believe a lot of it is and I could be wrong, but I had some guys tell me as well. I am too independent. I know I'm a little too independent at times and that's fine. <laughs> you got more questions for me. <laughs> so the reason why. I am too independent, as you know, people would say, is because I grew up with a single mom. So she was very independent, right? So therefore, it's not that I don't feel like I don't need a man. It's just that I don't want to wait on one to have what I desire, which is I want to be a mom at some point in my life. If he's not there when I'm ready to have a child, then sperm banks, here we come, you know? Um, and I would prefer, like I said, like I said before, I want my children to have a dad. I do. I want to be able to say, go to your dad, you know, ask him that, um, you know, see the dad be great with his kid. I, I love that. Like I said, it warms my heart when I see my guy friends with their kids and they're like all over it. And I'm like, oh, it's so cute. You know, <laughs> I love that. But I can't necessarily say that's going to happen for me. I would love for that to happen. But the way my life has been going as an adult, it hasn't seemed like that's necessarily going to happen. You know, I'm still a young adult, but still, you know, <laughs> it's still not necessarily there. So. OK, so let, let's let's investigate, because looking at you, <laughs> I doubt you have any issue using a job analogy. I doubt you have any issue getting a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> AKA getting a man, attracting somebody towards you. Right. What is um, what is the disconnect between attracting a man and keeping a man, not just a man, but a man of caliber, a man of substance, a man of like character? What do you think is going on? 
first off, okay, I am an attractive person. I know that. Um, but I'm not normal for most people. <laughs> like, I'm not normal. Neuro neurodivergent, is that the is that the term? Basically, like I like I said, I'm not biased towards any race or gender or anything like that. I'm very understanding. Um, and that's something a lot of men don't understand. I they don't get why I'm so understanding. Like I should be mad. I should be crazy. You know, I should be doing this or that. They go for what's more normal to them. Um, I am, like I said, when I said I'm independent, one of my friends saw the car drive, which, you know, it's not expensive, but I still, I pay for my own car. Um, my apartment is nice. Uh, I have good credit. <laughs> you know, I have more than one job. I actually own my own business. Um, I am very, very just constantly on the go, constantly doing something. I think like a man in the aspects of money. And the reason why I do is because how I grew up. I don't want to, I don't want to be homeless ever again. You know, I don't want to lack for anything. So I take care of myself because there's no one else to help me do it. Now, if there is someone who wants to come in and tell, you know, help me out with that kind of thing, and I also feel like he is suitable for it, of course, I'll do it. You know, I will let those walls down, but I have walls built up, <laughs> like walls, because I've been hurt in that aspect. Like I've had a boyfriend once who wouldn't pay his part of the rent. Oh, well, that means I had to pay it, right? Or I had um, another guy who was actually emotionally abusive towards me. He's not in my life anymore. Um, or someone else who just, they were very easy to manipulate. I don't like that. Give me a little bit of a challenge. Don't just go for everything that I'm telling you to do. So I am a highly picky person <laughs> when it comes to who I decide to be in a relationship with. And that stems from a lot of things. So this makes up who I am. So when, when you say you're uh you're an interesting person. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that cert a certain caliber of guys put off by that? Yeah, I'm intimidating. No, well, 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 <laughs> well, well let, we gonna talk about that. Okay, Because okay. I, I hear that a lot, actually. I hear women say they're intimidating. I think it's bullshit, but that's just me. I mean, right? yeah, yeah. And the reason I think it's bullshit is because... Um, to the type of man that most women say they want, the man who's making good money, who's assertive, who's a leader of men and the whole good, uh, the whole nine, he's not going to really be intimidated by, by you, right? So the question then ends up being, what is the, um, what difficulty are we having attracting that type of man? Or is it that we're actually not attracted to that type of man because we're used to the bottom of the barrel. So what do you what do you think it is for you? Is it that you can't attract that guy or retain that guy or it's easier, more fun, more exciting to manipulate the little guys down here? Ooh, I don't like manipulating. <laughs> no, I can't stand that, honestly. Um, so I do attract guys who are high value, right? Now, a lot of high value guys necessarily want a lower value woman. So they can actually take over and manipulate, not feel like they're fighting for dominance, right? Um, one of my guy friends, I'm definitely not saying his name, but one of my guy friends who is a high value guy, he- well, Hold on one second. How do you define high value? Because I want us to frame it properly. Well, based off of what Kevin Samuel says, of course, but my high value, my thought on high value is a man who has all his shit together, basically, financially, you know, good credit, um, he has either his own business or he's making over 100K somewhere else, you know, um, someone who literally has confidence in who he is and he's not ashamed about it. He's who he is no matter what. And I like that confidence and that kind of like alpha, you know, presentation type situation. Um, so that's my definition of how value also educated. Definitely. Um, so this particular friend, he told me, and I've had a lot of guy friends actually confess their love to me. And I'm like, I'm not interested in that way. 
Um, he specifically told me that he was afraid to be in a relationship with me, but he wanted to be. And I was like, okay. He said, if I were to be with you, I would be a hundred percent with you and I would give you everything. And I'm not talking about, he said, I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about all of me. And I was sitting there like, this is nice to hear, but it's not from him that I wanted to hear this from. Um, so what I've noticed, because unfortunately he was dating somebody at the same time he told me this. Um, right. <laughs> he wanted some pussy. That's what he wanted. <laughs> I've never had sex with him either. <laughs> like it's never been anything, you know, physical at all. It's just all been fun and just having, just hanging out with each other, you know? Um, and when he told me that I was feeling a little uncomfortable because I don't like to mess around with anybody's emotions, especially their heart or the fact that he had a girlfriend, you know, um, I'm really careful on that kind of stuff. So he, when he told me that I was like, why don't you go send it to your girlfriend? You know, <laughs> like, why are you dating her? If you don't feel like you can give her your all, like that is a problem. And um, I he didn't really actually give me the answer, but you know, he was basically just telling me that's how he feels about me. And he's known me for years. And, uh, I just don't, I'm a visual person. So he wasn't visually attracted. I'm not visually attracted to him. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we're not, and have not tried anything, but I mean, uh, I don't know. Like <laughs> that's, some of the situations I've dealt with, you know, when it came to some, some guys, especially. I think what's, what's challenging about that, um, cause I've been privileged to have a lot of conversations with a lot of women mm -hmm. and sometimes subconsciously what's actually happening, because unfortunately a lot of our women have abandonment issues Yes. and a lot of our women have self-esteem issues mm -hmm. and a lot of our women have, um, even mental issues, ADHD, depression, anxiety, the whole nine. Depression, anxiety right here. And yep. what actually happens sometimes, and this shit is sad as fuck, sometimes we run away from good things because on some core level, we don't think we deserve it. Yeah. And we'll use language like, um, you know, it's boring. <laughs> I know. Because it's peaceful. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And when we're used to chaos, yeah. peace looks boring. Right. So how do we how do we reconcile that? Because you know, good news or bad news, you're you're not alone, right? There right. are a lot oh, of women know, yeah. who they do want consciously want the white picket fence and the oh, yeah. family and the whole nine, but some part of their subconscious is either, is either telling them um, run, mm -hmm. you know, this is too good to be true, I don't deserve this, or um, it, it's not even attracted to that, really. Right. It's like you're exactly. conflicting with yourself. So, like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, considering the fact that me being such a visual person, um, it's hard for me to get past that sometimes. And I'll use that as my main thing. Like, oh, I'm just not attracted to him like that. Like, I can't see myself have sex with him. You know, like, that is a big problem for me. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't date that many people and haven't, you know, because I have, like, certain looks seriously um so that's one of the things for me another is yes I did think a lot of times I don't deserve good things because I didn't have good things when I was growing up you know you know I told you before that I had abandonment issues from both parents so therefore I was like everybody's going to leave it's always going to be like that it's always just going to be me because I don't deserve to have someone else around, you know, and therefore keeps me single for a while <laughs> and me having situationships on the side, you know? So, um, and then I, now I'm, in, you know, I'm different now where I've actually healed from a lot of that. And I actually do want a stable, happy and calm relationship. So I actually now kind of am talking to someone actually who shows that he's more, he's very nice, you know, and, uh, he may not look like he's nice. He looks kind of like, he looks like an asshole, <laughs> but he's a very nice person. And I literally said, I'm a little bored at one point. And I was like, wait a second, 
no, 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 we're not going back to that. We're, this is not happening. So I talk myself out of it. I have to, you know, think about all the, the trauma and the situations I had from previous guys who were not boring. Right. And what I liked about them and, but what it led to in the, you know, like later on. And, um, this guy sounds promising for the most part, you know, and I decided to do something different. Like he's not necessarily the type of person I would hundred percent go for physically, but he's got the height, he's got the, you know, the money, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm kind of like going for that and seeing what happens. I mean, it's very new, so I don't know, but. <laughs> well, so let me, let me ask you, is it, is it, and I want you to really think about this before you answer. Is it that you want those good things mm -hmm. or that you want to want those good things? Oh, I actually want those good things. I do, but I also like bad boys. <laughs> I used to like bad boys really bad. I used to, it's like, well, I, I like the, so when I was a teenager, it was all into like hot topic, right? I was that type of person. I was that rocker chick and I liked the um, tattoos and the piercings and I was crazy like that. <laughs> And that gave me a sense of, oh, my God, he's, ooh, you know, bad boy, ruffle my, you know, good feathers or whatever. And um, that kind of trickled into my adult life in that way. But it was, it looked different, you know. So the outside may have looked different, but the inside was always the same. Like, it was a uh, mental play on um, play. And, um, but I've always said, I want this, I want that, you know, like I want this good thing and I would never get that good thing because I didn't know how to get that good thing and keep it and who to look for when it comes to that specific thing. You know, now I know like, the guy who's emotionally um, stable is a good, is a good thing. <laughs> so, and that's what I desire. I wanted an emotionally stable guy who has no problems with expressing what he wants and you know, if he's upset about something or he's sad about something or happy, whatever the emotion is, but also the communication. I'm a huge communicator and I need people to communicate with me on almost everything when it comes to how they are, especially with me, you know? Um, so some people, they won't communicate and I'll be like, why? <laughs> What's going on with that? And sometimes it will have me chase the guy if I really like them. And not realizing that me chasing them is not necessarily a good thing because I'm looking like I'm needy, you know, and I hate looking needy. That is not my thing. Um, so I, I just won't say nothing. <laughs> like, I will literally just cut you off. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. And that's more health, a lot healthier than me doing the opposite. So <laughs> a lot of times... Um, when I hear women describe like their ideal guy, yeah, a lot of the characteristics are in conflict with one another because again, like sometimes it's still that hot topic little girl inside right. who is looking for a hot topic type of guy to be a six figure earning, charismatic, great father, mm -hmm. you know, wants to build a family with me thing. So like, why do you think, um, a lot of women don't necessarily mature in their preferences. Hmm. They just combine them. Yeah. We're stubborn. <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, as much as men are stubborn, women are too. We're very stubborn creatures. We, we want what we want. We're like, I deserve this. If you keep saying, I deserve this, then you, regardless of what you think you deserve, you're going to get, you know? So it could be like, I deserve a guy who's a bad boy. You're going to get a bad boy. If you deserve a guy who's a nice person, you know, you'll probably get that too. Um, but you necessarily can't get all of it at one time, you know, into that one package like you were explaining. Like, like the other day I saw a guy with a bunch of tattoos. I was like, dang, he looks kind of good. Like, <laughs> and I personally don't like tattoos on myself. I have none and I don't want any. But some guys with tattoos look, kind of good you know they have that edge to them and i'm like okay kristen this is not what you are looking for now like this is old you just get away from that you know um which is funny because i actually don't normally date guys with tattoos <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but I look at them and think they're hot as hell a lot of the time. And I'm like, ah, okay. So, um, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it's just, it's, if you want different, you will act different. If you also want different, you will treat, you will go towards different situations, you know? And I had to make myself go towards different situations. And that's why I was making the distinction between what you want and what you want to want. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because a lot of women say they want stuff, but a lot of times it's just they want to. I want to want a good father. Exactly. I want to want, and typically not. Yeah, but where are you finding this good father at? You know, like you're going out to the club. Thirsty you know, Thursday. Like to <laughs> <laughs> right. so I'm trying to find a family, a God-fearing, you know, potential politician. <laughs> Someday. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, so where are you finding this guy at? You know, you got to go where you want to find somebody that you're wanting to get. So like, if you want, if you're looking for a man who is a good dad, where would good dads go? You know, like potential good dads, where, would, where do they hang out? You know, um, if you want a tattoo guy, where do, where do the tattoo guys go? <laughs> you know, um, I mean, and that's what, that's what you have to think about. Like, I personally don't go out clubbing anymore. I do not do it because every time I do, it's the same type of people, whether it's the exact same people or it's the same type of people, you know, and I don't want to associate myself with people who are the same type all the time. If I'm looking for something that's going to actually last and I don't pick up guys at clubs, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to, I'm going to say this, they approach me. I just go, I'm not interested. Um, so like I went to Charlotte a few weeks ago and I was sitting at the bar <laughs> with my girlfriends. This guy came up to me, grabs me on the back of my arm. And I was like, <sighs> and he was like, Hey, what's your name? I was like, mm, Nope, not interested. <laughs> and he was like, Oh, you still sexy though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not interested. I have been approached that way so many times. It is annoying. It's very annoying. So sometimes I go out looking not so pretty because I don't want to be approached. So like, not necessarily means I don't wear makeup. I mean, I do have fresh face most of the time, but it's what I wear. If I decide I don't want to be approached, I will wear like the ugliest looking lounge clothes as possible <laughs> and go get what I need to have done. But somehow somebody always still comes after me. It's annoying sometimes but um i mean basically just go after go places that you want to you know meet certain people at you want somebody that's at a club all the time go to the club not me 